Inside of Microsoft Excel, there are a few different ways that you can go about creating a macro. What I'm going to show off here is perhaps the most accessible, the easiest way to create macros inside of Excel. We're going to use what's called the macro recorder, where literally all we do is say record macro. At that moment, Excel is now going to start recording anything we do in the application. Anything. You click on a button, you click on a cell, you click on a worksheet. Anything you do inside of Excel will now be recorded. Excel is just busy writing down everything that you do. Okay? So let's try this out. We're going to record ourselves cleaning up this simple little table here. All right, so step one. I've got my developer tab. It's active. There it is at the top of my screen. On the far left, I've got my code section. And in there, I'm going to go to record macro. I'll give that a click. This is going to open up my record macro dialog box where through a little bit of input of our own, we're going to set up our macro. So first thing, I need to name the macro. So I'm going to call this uh, format table. Now I do want to point out that there are some best practices to get into as you're creating macros. One of them, no spaces in your macro names. Excel won't allow it. Nope, sorry no spaces in the macro name. So just stay away from them. Okay. Uh, you could use hyphens. That would work. If you want to kind of simulate a space, great. But just no spaces in general. You can give them shortcut keys. I want to tie my macro to shortcut keys. So the next time I want to format this table, all I do is press Control J. I'll use J as my shortcut key. Okay. You want to be careful. You can overwrite system shortcut keys. So you want to, you wouldn't want to do something like Control S, because that's save, right? Don't use that here, otherwise it won't save anymore. It'll now run your macro. Okay? So Control J, that's what I'm going to use. We get to di dictate where we're going to store the macro, or essentially where the macro is going to be accessible from. In this demonstration, I'm going to store it in this workbook, meaning the active workbook that we're currently within. But we do have a few other options. I suggest looking into these other options here but one of the most common ones is this workbook. Now we can also give it a description. You know, something simple. This macro, let's see. Uh, this macro places uh, headers on the table and formats the data. Yada, yada, yada. You know, this is not only for you, the creator of the macro, but perhaps for other people, coworkers and so on, that are going to come in and take a look at your macro and work with your macro as well. All right, so you put some type of description in there. Now, that's it. Give it a name, optionally a shortcut key. Where are you going to store it? Where is this macro going to be accessible from? And any additional notes, description that you want to leave behind. Now, I'm going to hit OK, but the moment that I hit OK, we are now recording Excel will write down everything that you do. So I hit OK. And once again, I am now recording. You can see up here on my Developer tab that my buttons no longer record macro, but it stopped recording. I'm not going to click on it yet. Don't click on it because I haven't done anything yet. But we are recording. All right. So my first step, I'm going to insert a row up at the top of my, my list here because I'm going to put some headers here. So I'm going to click on Row 1. And I'm going to use a shortcut key. I'm going to do Control Plus. And I'm using the plus key on my number pad. If you use the plus key at the top of your keyboard, you got to do Control Shift Plus. Okay, But either method. Or you can right click and insert as well. Up to you. But remember, Excel just recorded that. It said, hey, they inserted a row up at the top. So now I'm going to insert some headers. We'll call this Employee ID. We got Last Name. First name, we got department, we got email, we got extension, location, hire date, and uh, pay. All right. So once again, I'm recording this. Excel is writing down all these operations, all these, these little steps that I've just done here. Inserted a row, put in some text as headers. Now let's go back and format it. Let's grab those headers. 
I'll go to my home tab and I'm just gonna format them. You know, maybe I'll make them blue, white text, make them bold, a little bit larger in size. That looks good. All right, so now I've got some headers. Now I also want to format the pay rate as currency. So I'm gonna select that. I'll grab from I2 and I'm gonna do a shortcut key here. I'm gonna do Control Shift Down Arrow. So it jumps me all the way to the bottom. And I'm gonna format that, go to my Home tab, underneath Number, I'm gonna turn on the currency symbol here. All right, so now I got dollar amounts. And I wanna format the dates as well. So let's grab the H2, Control Shift Down Arrow, all the way down to H38. And I'm gonna go format that as a different date style. So I don't want just the short date, I don't want long date. I'm gonna go down to more number formats and I'll format this one using this date here. Uh, two digit, three letter, two digit, sounds good. I'll hit okay. And I've now reformatted my dates. All right, things are looking good. I, I think I wanna make a couple more adjustments here. I'm gonna change the column widths here just to make them a little bit wider. Now once again, remember everything I'm doing here, Excel is recording it. Oh, look at that, I misspelled something. We'll see how to fix that here in a moment. I could fix it right now, but Excel would would record it. It would write it down that, oh, hey, they went back and adjusted that. So I'm gonna ignore that for right now, but we'll come back to it. And let's try one more thing. I'm gonna click into my list. I'm gonna turn on the filters. So I'll click into my list, I'll go to my data tab, and I'm just gonna turn on the big filter button there. Now, once again, Excel just wrote that down. Oh, hey, not only did they add headers and format stuff, but they also turn on the filters. All right, so we've now recorded a macro. Our next step, and a very important step, once you're all done, you've, you've performed all the necessary steps that you want the macro to do, you have to stop recording. So I'm gonna go back to my developer tab, top of my screen, far left, I'm now gonna click on stop recording. Very important, click. I'm no longer recording. Make sure you do that. You don't want to continue recording and go off and do, do something else like run your macro, try to test it out because you're still recording. All right, so we've recorded our first macro. Congratulations. We're going to take a look at next how you can now run this macro as well as edit the macro.